Hi and welcome to a new episode of Why Code. Today we'll talk about one of the most important topics that's a big concern for parents. A lot of parents are concerned about what is normal in speech development in their children. And there are two types of communication among human beings, verbal and nonverbal communication. Speech and language are the tools of verbal communication. Statistics say 10% of our children have speech disorders before preschool stage. And up to 50% of our children, they have language disorders in the preschool stage. And it's our pleasure today in White Coat to host one of the outstanding speech and language pathologists in Southern California, Narissa Ventris, to talk about the problems and teach us better ways of communication with our children. For interaction with White Coat, please send in all your questions and concerns to our official Facebook page, White Coat, or call the number that will be shown on the screen to ask our guest any questions about the topic any time during the episode. أعزائي مشاهدي قنوات الكرم في كل مكان في العالم وأعزائي مشاهدي White Coat تحديدا أهلا بيكم في حلقة جديدة من برنامجنا الأسبوعي White Coat. الحقيقة دايما بيبقى مهم جدا أو محل تساؤل لكل ال لكل الوالدين يعني كل أب وكل أم على مستوى العالم لما بالذات يجيبوا بيبي هل ابني ماشي كويس في النطق بتاعه التطور بتاع النطق والتخاطب بتاعه بيبقى عامل ازاي الحقيقة دايما كونسيرن كبير جدا لكل أب وكل أم والإحصائيات بتقول أنه 10% تقريبا من أولادنا عندهم مشاكل في النطق أو في الكلام تحديدا في مرحلة ما قبل المدرسة وأكثر من 50% عندهم مشاكل في اللغة والحقيقة النهاردة احنا هنفرق ما بين ثلاث حاجات مهمين جدا اللي هي السبيتش اللي هو النطق نفسه أو الكلام واللانجوش اللي هي اللغة طريقة الارتيكيليشن بتاعتهم أو النطق الحروف ومخارج الألفاظ والفلوينسي اللي هو الانسيابية الكلام نفسه فدول ثلاث مشاكل بيبقوا دايما موجودين وهنناقشهم هنناقش المشاكل اللي موجودة فيهم وهنناقش كمان ازاي نكتشف ده بدري وازاي كل اب وكل ام يشتغلوا في البيت على ده وكمان الباثولوجيست او اخصائيه التخاطب تقدر تعالج الامور دي ازاي بيسعدنا ويشرفنا النهارده ان يكون معانا ناريسا فانترس واحده من احسن السبيتش لانجويج باثولوجيست في في كاليفورنيا هي النهارده هتعلمنا ازاي نتخاطب مع اولادنا وازاي نعلمهم ان هم يستخدموا اللغه والتخاطب بشكل افضل بكتير زي ما حضراتكم عارفين اي اسئله عن الموضوع ده صفحتنا الرئيسيه على الفيسبوك وايت كود تقدروا تبعتوا لنا اي اسئله عليها كمان تقدروا في اي وقت تكلموا الارقام اللي هتبقى موجوده على الشاشه عشان تسالوا اي اسئله للضيفه بتاعتنا النهارده عن موضوع النهارده وهو مشاكل تاخير النطق والتخاطب في الاطفال يلا بينا نبتدي فقرات برنامجنا النهارده وايت كود sidelined by a sore back, you're not alone. Four out of five people experience back pain at some point, making it the fifth most common reason for visiting the doctor. And here are some tips to avoid back pain. Number one, watch your weight and exercise regularly. Pounds, few extra pounds, especially in, in your midsection, can make back, your back pain worse by shifting your center of gravity and putting a strain on your lower back. Number two is stop smoking. Smoking restricts the flow of nutrients containing blood to your spinal desk, and so smokers are more liable to back pain. Number three is watch, watch your sleep positions. Sleeping on your side with your knees bolt slightly toward your chest is sometimes suggested. Number four, pay attention to your posture. The best chair for preventing back pain is the one with a straight back and low back support. And you can sit straight and pull your core muscles. Number five is 
be careful how you lift stuff. Do not bend over from your waist to fit heavy objects. Bend your knees and squat, pulling in your stomach muscles and holding the object close to your body as you stand up. Do not twist your body while you're lifting. Number six, avoid high heels, especially for women, because high heels can change the center of gravity and they can strain your lower back. Stick to one inch heel as possible. Number seven, watch your skinny tight jeans. Clothing so tight, it might interfere with, it might interfere with bonding and with bending or sitting or walking and that cannot, can aggravate your back pain. Number eight, pick the right, pick the right handbag or briefcase. It should be adjustable with wide straps. أعزائي مشاهدي وايت كوت النهارده اخترنا ان احنا نكلمكم عن الام الظهر والحقيقه انه الاحصائيات بتقول انه اربعه من كل خمسه في وقت ما من حياتهم كان عندهم مشكله الام الظهر والام الظهر تقريبا هي خامس سبب في الترتيب ليه الناس بتروح تشوف الدكتور فدي ده موضوع مهم جدا منتشر جدا فقلنا ندي لحضراتكم خطوات بسيطه جدا ازاي قدر الامكان نتجنب المشكله دي رقم واحد طبعا ودي بديهيه لكل الناس ان انت تحاول تحافظ على وزنك قدر الامكان ده مهم جدا كمان حاجه مهمه جدا ان انت تحاول تعمل تمارين رياضيه بشكل منتظم ليه لانه تقريبا لما بنحط وزن زياده وخاصه في الجزء الوسطاني في عن طريق البط ده بيغير حاجه اسمها مركز الجاذبيه في جسمك وبيخلي كل الويت ده او كل الوزن ده موجود على فقرات الظهر تحديدا وده بيخلي انه في دايما سترين على الـ 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 العضلات بتاع الظهر ودايما بيخلينا نحس بالام في ظهرنا. رقم اثنين هو التدخين والحقيقه ناس كتير قوي هتقول لي ايه اللي جاب التدخين لموضوع الم الظهر؟ الحقيقه انه التدخين زي ما هو معروف بيعمل ضيق في الشرايين وتحديدا الشرايين اللي واصله للسباينال كورد نفسه او للنخاع العصبي نفسه اللي موجود في جسمنا او النخاع الشوكي وبيأثر على العمود الفقري فبيقلل كميه المواد الغذائيه اللي رايحه للمناطق دي لانه زي ما بنقول ببساطه شديده الوعاء نفسه بيتسد نتيجه التراكمات اللي بتحصل عليه من التدخين ف تقريبا لانه الامداد الدموي بيقل للمناطق دي بيعمل لنا مشكله كبيره وبيحسسنا بالام الظهر عشان كده في كل الدراسات الجديده لقوا انه الناس اللي بتدخن اكتر عرضه تقريبا 13 مره لالام الظهر من الناس العاديه فده مهم جدا ان احنا نحطه في حسبان ثالث حاجه بتسبب لنا الام ظهر في حياتنا بشكل عام هو الوضع بتاعنا اثناء النوم والحقيقه كل العلماء قالوا انه لازم تلاحظ وضعك اثناء النوم وافضل طريقه ان انت تتغلب على الام الظهر ان انت تنام على جنبك وتقريبا الركبتين بتوعك يبقوا ناحيه صدرك شويه يعني تنام على اي جنب من الجنبين والركبتين يبقوا يطلعوا لفوق شويه ناحيه صدرك قريب من صدرك عشان ده بيفرد تقريبا عضلات الظهر بيقلل البريشر اللي موجود عليها او بيقلل الضغط اللي موجود عليها فالوضع ده اثناء النوم بيريح كتير وبيقلل كتير من الام الظهر. رقم اربعه ودي المهمه دايما ودي بنقولها لكل اولادنا وكل الناس تقريبا بتقولها لبعض ان انت دايما تلاحظ وضعك اثناء الجلوس لانه ده مهم جدا جدا جدا. وافضل كراسي للناس اللي بتعاني من الام الظهر هي الكراسي اللي ظهرها بيبقى تقريبا مستقيم بشكل كبير جدا وفي سبورت للجزء الاخير من الظهر فالكراسي لازم يبقى ظهرها مستقيم وفي زي كوشن او يعني سبورت للظهر من الجزء المنطقه اللي تحت. رقم خمسه ودي كتير بنغلط فيها الطريقه اللي انت بترفع فيها لازم تتنبه لان الطريقه اللي انت بترفع بيها الحاجات. ودي الحقيقه عايز اوريها لحضراتكم مهمه جدا جدا لانه كتير واحنا بنرفع الحاجات بنوطي من وسطنا ودي اكتر حاجه غلط بنعملها المفروض لما نيجي نرفع حاجه نتعلم ونحط في دماغنا دايما ان احنا نرفع الحاجه وظهرنا مستقيم يعني اللي يتني مش هو وسطي ولكن هي ركبتي يعني انزل وارفع الحاجه وانا ظهري مستقيم ما تنيش وسطي دايما هقول تاني النقطه دي لان النقطه مهمه جدا اتعلم ان انا ما تنيش وسطي وانا بشيل اي حاجه او برفع اي حاجه اللي تتني هي ركبتي وظهري ينزل المستقيم وارفع الحاجه دي انما ما تنيش وسطي لقدام. سادس نقطه ودي المهمه جدا وطبعا لكل السيدات عاشقي الكعوب العاليه 
تجنبوا الكعوب العالي لانه الكعب العالي زي ما انا شرحت في اول نقطه الفكره كلها في الام الظهر انه مركز الجاذبيه بيتغير وبالتالي بنحط حمل على فقرات الظهر فكل ما زاد الطول او قصر كل ما زاد الطول بالهاي هيلز تحديدا بيغير مركز الجاذبيه وبيحط سترين اكبر على عضلات الظهر وده بيخلينا نشعر بالام ظهر اكتر رقم سبعة ودي برضو مهمه جدا لكل الشباب والبنات بالذات اليومين دول التايت جينز بشكل عام بيقلل البلاد سبلايز وبيخلي فكره الحركه او القعده بطريقه مظبوطه مش ممكنه فمهم جدا ان احنا ناخد بالنا ونتجنب اللبس الضيق بشكل عام او الجينز الضيق لانه ده بيأثر على طريقه قعدتنا بيأثر على البوستشر او الوضع بتاعنا وده بيسبب الام ظهر كبيره جدا رقم 8 ودي بنقولها لكل اولادنا الصغيرين دايما نختار الشنط بالذات سواء الشنط المدرسية أو بعض طبيعة الأعمال اللي بتتطلب أنه يبقى دايما معاه شنطة نختار أنواع الشنطة دي تبقى الحملات بتاعتها أو الحزامات اللي موجودة فيها تبقى عريضة عشان تاخد أكبر جزء من الظهر وفي نفس الوقت تبقى الشنطة نفسها تقريبا واصلة لمستوى الراس من ورا فده برضو زي ما أنا قلت بي بي ما بيغيرش كتير فكرة مركز الجاذبية في الجسم وما بيحطش حمل كتير على عضلات ظهرنا تقريبا لو التبعنا الثمان خطوات دولة هنقلل نسبة كبيرة جدا من ألام الظهر اللي بنحس بيها Today in Healthy Kids we'll discuss the guidelines how to raise socially intelligent child Number one Foster good skills with, from toddlers on this is one of the most important skill sets your child will ever develop. Number two, support his friendship, honor and enforce your child developing friendship. Talk about them, remember them and create opportunities for them to play and do activities together. Number three, model respectful relating. Remember that your children will treat others as you treat them and our children will learn from the way we're relating in our relations and with others. Number four, teach your child that people are important. Do not, do not let your child intentionally or unintentionally disrespect another person. Or it's very important for parents to give coaching on how to handle interactions that feel awkward with them. Number five is, Teach your kids to express their needs and wants without attacking the other person. Number six, which is very important, help your child to learn how to repair rights and relationship. And when we, when we think about repairing relationship, we usually focus on apologizing. But premature apologies sometimes is not heartfelt. So it might backfire on your kid, causing the child to hold a grudge. Giving them a chance to cool down first and then and it always works for the best of them. And make sure, make sure to teach them that apologies are very useful and it's very useful friendship skill. أعزائي مشاهدي وايت كوت من الأباء والأمهات النهاردة اخترنا أن احنا نتكلم معاكم في موضوع مهم جدا في تربية أطفالنا تكملة للسلسلة اللي ابتدناها من أول البرنامج والحقيقة النهاردة اخترنا إزاي نربي أطفال عندهم ذكاء اجتماعي أو اجتماعيين بشكل عام ونربيهم صح في النقطة دي الحقيقة في ست نقط مهمة جدا نحاول قدر الإمكان نعملها مع أطفالنا رقم واحد إن احنا نشجعهم على, التفو... على الصداقة منذ بداية طفولتهم لأنه ده مهم جدا إنه ابني حتى من سن سنتين ثلاثة في البري سكول أبتدي أشجعه على تكوين صداقات منذ الصغر ومهم جدا إن أنا فهمه إنه يبقى واحد أو جزء من مجموعة رقم اتنين ان انا مش بس اشجعه على تكوين الصداقات دي ولكن اعمل كمان ان انا اسبورت الصداقات دي ازاي اسبورت الصداقات دي بان انا دايما افهم ابني انه جزء زي ما انا قلت من المجموعة دي كمان ان انا اخلق فرص انه ابني يجتمع مع اصحابه يعملوا انشطة مع بعض حتى لو في البيت عندك كأب او كأم ان انت تجمعهم وانه دايما زي ما انا قلت يعملوا انشطة مع بعض تالت حاجة واللي أنا تقريبا بقولها كل حلقة من ساعة ما ابتدينا إذا عايز تخلي ابنك اجتماعي نبتدي بأنفسنا كنموذج للتواصل الاجتماعي مع الغير لأنه أطفالنا لما هيجوا يتعاملوا مع بعض هيتعاملوا بالطريقة اللي احنا بنعملهم بيها فمهم جدا إزاي تعرف تتعامل إن أنت تبقى دايما في جسر مع ابنك وإن أنت دايما يبقى في علاقة واضحة مع ابنك وتبقى علاقة 
يعني تو سايد ريليشن زي ما بنقول علاقه من طرفين ان انتوا دايما في تواصل وبتتكلموا مع بعض رقم أربعة وده المهم جدا 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 ان احنا نعلم الناس او نعلم ولادنا انه الناس اللي حواليهم ده مهمين ومهم جدا جدا ان احنا نحترمهم وقدر الامكان ما نخليش ابننا يحاول يغلط في حد خصوصا في الشكل الاجتماعي لانه ده بيبقى مهم جدا ان احنا نعلمه لاطفالنا رقم خمسة ودي مهمة جدا ان انا دايما اعلم اولادي ان هم يعبروا عن كل ارائهم ويعبروا عن مشاعرهم من غير الهجوم على الاخر وللاسف احنا بنفتقد جزء من الثقافة دي انه دايما لازم حد يهاجم حد لما يجي يعبر عن وجهة نظر هو عايزها فجزء مهم جدا من اللي احنا نعمله مع اولادنا ان انا اعلمه يعبر اولا عن مشاعره سواء هو غضبان او مبسوط او زعلان عبر عن مشاعرك وطلعها بره ولكن بطريقه ما نهاجمش بيها الاخر يعني دايما تعبر من غير ما تهاجم الاخر رقم سته ودي المهمه جدا 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 ان احنا دايما نعلم اولادنا ازاي يصلحوا علاقاتهم مع الغير والحقيقه بمعنى ادق او بمعنى اخر في الموضوع ده ان انا اعلم ولادنا ثقافه الاعتذار بشكل عام ودي بنفقدها كتير في مجتمعنا والحقيقه انه وانا بعلم ولادي ثقافه الاعتذار لازم كمان يبقى جزء منها وانا بعلمهم ان الاعتذار لازم يكون على قد الحدث كمان انه اعلمه ازاي يعتذر وتوقيت الاعتذار زي ما بيسموه فن الاعتذار مش مش يعني دايما تحاول تستنى لما الموقف يهدى وبعدين تعتذر ده اللي لازم نعلمه لاولادنا لانه ده جزء مهم جدا من الثقافه اللي لازم نعلمها لهم ونعلمهم كمان انه الاعتذار ده عمره ما بيقلل منك ولكن هو وسيله جيده او مهاره جيده عشان تبقى شخص اجتماعي موهوب لو احنا بشكل عام عملنا الست خطوات دول مع اولادنا هنساعد بشكل كبير جدا ان احنا نطلعهم اجتماعيين وكمان يكون عندهم نقطه الذكاء الاجتماعي Dr. Keith Sundar, Chief Medical Officer of Breezes Recovery and Wellness in beautiful Riverside, California. I design breezes with the philosophy of treating the whole person with cutting-edge transcranial magnetic stimulation, neurofeedback, and customized addiction-specific mindfulness meditation. Relapse prevention is at the heart of our state-of-the-art program, and brain optimization with our proprietary method is the key. To building resilience and experiencing joy and success, please visit us at www.breezesrecovery.com. Nerissa Ventris, and I am a speech language pathologist. I specialize in the evaluation, diagnosis, and treatment of communicative disorders. You can also call me a speech therapist or an SLP. As a professional SLP, I am licensed by the state to practice both in the school setting and in my private practice. I received an undergraduate degree in liberal studies and then a multiple subject teaching credential before pursuing my graduate coursework in communicative disorders. When I began in the field, I started in the public school setting as a speech language pathology assistant working with students with hearing impairments. Then, when I became a speech language pathologist, I was fortunate enough to be placed in the district with the moderate to severe kids 
as well as the general education population. I had the opportunity to work with autism, Down syndrome, and a variety of other intellectual disorders. It was there I found my passion for working with students who are nonverbal and students with limited expressive communicative abilities. I have also worked with stuttering disorders, language disorders, phonological and articulation disorders, and early intervention, to name a few. And honestly, each population brings its own rewards. In 2016, I opened my own private practice called AVID Speech Therapy. I chose the name AVID, which means having a keen interest or enthusiasm for something, because it represents how I feel about my field and my patients. My mission for my patients is to help them become the best communicators possible. I strive to build personal relationships with my patients and their families because working together as a team helps us to achieve their goals faster. I believe that each patient is unique. Therefore, I build programs around my patients' strengths and weaknesses. In my free time, I like to spend time with my family and friends. I like reading and doing puzzles, and I like spending time outdoors. Stay tuned for more on the pediatric speech world on White Coat on Al Karma TV, March 24th. اهلا بيكم اعزائي المشاهدين مره ثانيه في فقرتنا الرئيسيه النهارده في وايت كوت وهي مشاكل النطق وتاخر الكلام واللغه في الاطفال واحد من اهم اهم الموضوعات اللي كتير من الاباء والامهات بيبصوا له بشكل كبير جدا آه كمان مش بس هنناقش ده هنناقش فكره ايه هو التطور آه الطبيعي بتاع الكلام والنطق في الاطفال وازاي نعرف ان اولادنا ماشيين على التراك الصح Uh, it's our pleasure today to have one of the outstanding uh, speech language pathologists, uh, Nerissa Ventris. Um, welcome to I Code for the first time. Thank you for having me. Um, Nerissa, it's, it's a very big concern for parents always if my kid is on the right track, like speech wise. So, in the beginning, let's talk about the normal stuff. What is um, like the children normal speech milestones, okay. first of all? Yeah, so we can start from the beginning. So. Typically from birth um, up to about six months, you'll start to hear your child start to engage in early vocalization. So that'll sound like coos and goos, those, oh, those really sweet sounds you hear. Okay. Um, and you'll even hear some very differences in their cry. So you can notice a difference in a cry that is for hunger versus a cry that's for pain. Okay. Um, from about 7 to 12 months, you'll start to hear the beginning of their variegated babbling. So you'll hear early consonant sounds like an M or a B, and they'll move, move those back and forth like mama, baba. Okay. And they'll even start to sound like some words. So you might think you're hearing your first mama or dada right. during this time. And it's misperception or it's like they can say? You can usually differentiate when they're just babbling and then there starts, okay. you'll start to see later when you're getting towards 12 months where it's that with intention. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> about one year, 12 months to 20 months, uh, you'll start to see your child respond to their name. They'll recognize their name when you call them. Okay. They'll use different gestures, maybe lifting their arms for <coughs> up. Um, they will point to objects that you name and you'll start to see the beginning of their vocabulary grow. So towards the end of this 12 to 12 months, they should have about 10 to 20 words. Okay. And um, they'll even And they can pronounce it fully, like the right no, way? No, the pronunciation not? is not there yet, and we're not worried about it. Okay. Typically at home, you'll start to understand what they mean, where other people may not understand that. Okay. <laughs> and they can follow simple commands like, come here. So okay. they have that understanding. In the next phase, around two to three years, um, you'll start to see a robust vocabulary build. They'll start to have around 150 to 200 words. Wow, that much difference just in almost on the third year. Yes, okay. and that's where you see a wide variety in kids, but that two-year-old is that language boom. You really start to see it. Okay. Um, they'll start to follow simple directions like go get your shoes or put this in the trash. So you see them understanding longer utterances and being able to follow d longer directions. They'll use some early developing pronouns, so me or I or you, and they may have some errors there, so okay. me go to the park, and that's okay. It's very common. So it's okay to, to have those kind of 
Yes, definitely. They're starting to understand and get the hang of language, and you'll see some of those errors, but they work their way through it. When they alternate developing. you and I and me, and exactly. it's, it's okay it's between okay. two to three years. Okay. Yeah. Um, you'll also hear uh, sometimes a stutter, some speech disfluencies in this age. And it's, again, this is very okay for your child to have. It's common for them to get caught up on words. Remember, they're just getting this robust vocabulary and they have a lot going on and they have a lot to say. So they'll start to stutter. I, 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 I'm excited and that's normal. Just be okay. patient with them. Don't correct them and wait them out. Okay. And uh, at this time, you'll start to see them start to put some phrases together, so two and three words. They'll want to start pairing words where before they were just using those single words. And by three, they should have about three to four words they're putting together. Okay. And you'll start to see an increase in their speech <coughs> intelligibility. You all at home will understand most of what they're saying, but um, they still may not be understood by everyone, but it'll get a little bit clearer. Okay. Around three to four years of age, their vocabulary will have grown usually to about a thousand words. Wow. Big okay. jump here. And you'll want to see a variety in their vocabulary. You'll see nouns, you'll see some verbs, you'll see them using different kind of modifiers to describe. Um, they'll start to ask questions and they'll be able to answer questions. Where are we going? To grandma's house. Okay. So they'll have that understanding. Their sentences will start to get longer. They can put together more words. And they're definitely starting to speak more clearly um, to both the people in the home environment, familiar listeners, and people who are unfamiliar. They should be more understood. Okay. When should the strangers start to understand our kids clearly? Like by what age? Strangers usually in between that three and four year old age. So um, it, at home, like I said, you're going to start, you're going to understand them more. That's your priority is that you understand them. Strangers aren't yet listening to them every single day, so they're not hearing it, but they'll start to understand them more at that time. Perfect. The first question I have is about, before we talk about any problems in any way, let's see what is the first thing. The first question I have is, what is the natural language for the children in the adults? I said, from the first four to six months, you hear just the baby, as we say, he will be able to say that he will be able to say that ما انتش فاهمها طبعا بس بيزكلي هو بيطلع اصوات زي ما بنقول بيلغي نفسه ده من سن أربعة لست شهور من سن سبع شهور ل 12 شهر اللي هو السن سنه تقريبا قالت ان هو اكتر حرفين بيستخدمهم هو البي والام او الب والام وقالت كمان انه ممكن يقول يعني زي برضو اصوات مش الكلمه كامله زي بابا او ماما آه ولكن ما بتبقاش هي الكلمه كامله انا عارف انه في اهالي كتير آه بتستعجل في السن ده من سن سبع شهور ل 12 شهر وتبتدي تحس انه ابنها خلاص بقى بدا ينطق او بنتها بدات تنطق آه فده مهم جدا آه ان احنا نبقى فاهمين ان هو بس بيقول الحروف بس ما بيقولش الكلمات كامله الحقيقه من سن آه 12 شهر ل 20 شهر آه وقالت انه دي من اهم الحاجات من اهم مراحل نمو الطفل من سن 12 شهر ل 20 طه شهر يعني تقريبا من سن سنه لسن سنه وثمان شهور ال ال الكلمات او حصيله كلمات وبتبتدي تزيد جدا والمفروض عند سن 20 شهر تقريبا يبقى الطفل بيقول من 10 ل 20 كلمه على بعض مش لازم قالت انه مش لازم يبقوا مفهومين قوي لكل اللي حواليه ولكن بيبقوا مفهومين من الاب والام بس اتليست تكون حصيلته اللغويه بيتكلم من 10 ل 20 كلمه قالت كمان انه ممكن في السن ده يبتدي يستخدم الايماءات او الايحاءات قالت زي مثلا لو الطفل عايز يتشال يبتدي يرفع ايده لفوق فدي بتبقى لغه التخاطب بين الاب والام وبين اولادهم. الحقيقه يعني من سن سنتين لثلاث سنين قالت انه ده تقريبا بيبقى زي ما بنقول هو من اكثر المراحل اللي الطفل بينمو فيها لغويا جدا قالت من سن سنتين لثلاثه الطفل المفروض حصلته اللغويه بتنمو زي ما قلنا من 10 ل 20 بتنمو الى 150 ل 200 كلمه كامله يقدر الطفل يستخدمهم في السن ده قالت ان هو كمان بيستخدم انا وانت ولكن لسه ما زال بيعكسهم بيقول عليك انت انا والعكس فده اتس اوكي okay في السن ده ان احنا يعني الطفل يبقى بيعمل كده قالت انه كمان في السن ده انه 75% تقريبا من الكلام بيبقى مفهوم من الناس الغرب وبيبتدي الكلام يوضح كتير عن الاول وده بيبقى شيء مهم جدا من سن 3 ل 4 سنين وده بقى بيبقى 
تقريبا الاكثر مرحله الطفل بينمو فيها لغويا في النطق كمان قالت انه زي ما احنا قلنا بنروح لحد سن ما بين سنتين لثلاثه الطفل بيبقى عنده من 150 ل 200 كلمه من سن ثلاث اربع من ثلاث سنين لاربع سنين الطفل بيبقى عنده تقريبا حصيله لغويه حوالي 1000 كلمه كامله آه كمان بيقدر يجاوب الاسئله السهله قالت احنا رايحين فين مثلا احنا رايحين لتيتا او جده فده آه الطفل بيقدر يجاوب الاسئله دي وقالت عند اخر سن الاربع سنين الطفل المفروض الغرب كمان يبتدوا يفهموا اللغه السهله بتاعته دي كان التطور التطور للطفل وحصيلته اللغويه وطريقه كلامه مهم جدا ان احنا نبقى عارفين المراحل دي عشان لو في اي مرحله من دول حسينا انه اطفالنا ما بتنموش عليها او مش على التراك الصح نبتدي نسال مساعده الحقيقه سؤالي ليها الجاي هيبقى عشان نفرق المشاكل في في السبيتش في الكلام نفسه او في اللغه او في انسياب الانسياب المخارج الالفاظ لازم نفرق بين الثلاثه وهي هتشرح لنا الفرق بين الثلاثه. ناريسا اتس فيري امبورتنت تو ديفرنشيت بين ذا سبيتش اند لانجويج اند فلوينسي ديس اوردرز سو وات ار ذا ديفرنس؟ اوكي سو اف وي تاكينج اباوت ا سبيتش ديس اوردر وين وي ثينك اباوت سبيتش وي ثينك ذات ذاتس هاو وي ساي اور ساوندز اند ووردز سو وين يو هاف ا سبيتش ديس اوردر اتس ذا ان ابيلتي تو برودوس ذوز ساوندز كوريكتلي And we can look. We look at this different ways. So there might be an articulation disorder, and this is difficulty more with speech motor control problems. So specific speech sounds. So you'll hear them, but it's not always impacting your speech intelligibility. Okay. We talk about a phonological phonological disorder. These are speech problems that are specific to phonological processes. So as your child develops, they go through using these different phonological processes. That is what is impacting their speech intelligibility early. And we wait for them to develop through those. Now it becomes a disorder when they aren't advancing through those at the age we would anticipate. Okay. Um, so an example of this would be a cluster reduction. So. For a word that has two consonants together, like star, that S and T, they'll omit one of them. So instead of saying that, they'll hear tar or dar okay. for the word. Another, so usually they miss one letter. Yeah. Toward the f beginning or the end, or it, it doesn't can be. Matter. Yeah, it can be at the end. Uh, there's those clusters together at the end of the words, like sand. They might say sad okay. for that. Um, another example of a phonological disorder is final consonant deletion. So they'll omit a sound right at the end of the word. So cat will sound like ca. And you think about the developing child, and when they're using multiple process together, right. it's going it's to impact their speech intelligibility because we're missing sounds all over the place, we're making substitutions, right. and it really impacts how you can understand them. Okay. And uh, do we have any other examples for uh, the speech disorders? Uh, so we have, yeah, so an articulation disorder, some of them might be a lisp, which you hear about. So we have um, an interdental or a frontal lisp, and you'll see the tongue move to the front of the teeth. So right. an S sound will sound like F instead. Right. Um, and then there's lateral lisps. So with the frontal lisp, that is developmental until later. We wouldn't necessarily be concerned early. Lateral lisp is when the air comes out the sides. Okay. And if you ever hear that, that's a concern. Okay. So, want to be so ready it's for okay that. to hear f, but that's not okay. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. The as I said, the question is, what is the difference between speech or the kalam? I said that the speech is the idea that you are able to get the sound, the ability to get the sound right. And she said that sometimes we have problems in this point. اولا انه طريقه الكلام بتتاخر انه الطفل ما بينطقش اصلا من الاول ما بينطقش الكلمات صح قالت كمان انه في مشكله دايما بنسميها الكلاستر ريدكشن او عدم القدره على انه ما بيقولش الكلام لاخره او دايما بيفقد حرف سواء في الاول او في الاخر قالت زي كلمه مثلا ساند اللي هو الرمل فبيقول مثلا ما بينطقهاش من غير الاس او ما بينطقهاش من غير الدي في الاخر فدايما الطفل ما يقولش الكلمه على بعضها <تصفيق> عفوا آه. ودايما بيفقد يا اما حرف في الاول يا اما حرف في الاخر قالت كمان اللاسب او اللي بنسميها اللدغات الطفل اللي بيبقى عنده مشكله لما يجي يتكلم بيبقى عنده مشكله في اللدغات قالت انه في لدغه بنقدر نعديها زي قالت السين بيقولها الث يعني بيطلع لسانه شويه لبره فيها دي اوكي قالت ان احنا دي ممكن تتحسن بمرور الوقت اللي لازم نبتدي نشتغل عليها من بدري هو Uh, ال ال السين لما بتبقى لاترالي او uh, بيبتدي يطلع هوا من الجنب 
زي مثلا كلمة صاحب فلو قال صاحب دي بتتحسن بمرور الوقت إنما لو قال صاحب دي لازم نبتدي نشتغل عليها من بدري ويبتدي الأخصائية التخاطب تشتغل على الكلام ده That's for the, the speech pathology. What about the language, uh, language disorders? I'm sorry. Yeah, so a language disorder, if we think about language, it's how we understand and use language to communicate. And so a language disorder or a language delay is when we have trouble understanding others or sharing and communicating our thoughts. So we break this down into a couple categories. So there could be a receptive language impairment. So that's when you have trouble understanding words or following directions. So it's that listening piece. Okay. An expressive language impairment is when you're having trouble using a variety of vocabulary. Maybe your grammar skills aren't quite intact. That's your trouble communicating with other people. Yes, it's okay. that trouble communicating, getting those words out. And then we have what we call a pragmatic language disorder. And this is when you're not using social language skills like you should be. So maybe you're not using greetings you're consistently, or you're having difficulty engaging in back and forth conversation. So understanding those rules. Okay. Uh, مشاكل اللغة فكرة عدم استيعاب الكلام اللي بيتقالك دي ده نوع اللي هو ان انت تقدر تفهم او الطفل يقدر يفهم اللي بيتقاله دي بتبقى مشكلة نوع المشكلة التاني انه يقدر يعبر عن اللي هو عايزه باللغة المصبوطة ودي بتبقى مشكلة تالتة المشكلة تانية مشكلة تالتة اللي هو يدخل في حوار من طرفين فدي قلنا مشاكل الكلام مشاكل اللغة المشاكل المشكلة التالتة اللي هنعيشها مشكلة انسيابية الكلام نفسه في الأطفال what about the fluency disorders? So a fluency disorder, like we were saying, if fluency is the ability to speak clearly and to express yourself easily. Smoothly. Yes. Okay. So if you have a fluency disorder, it's the inability to express yourself easily. And we mostly hear this referred to as a stutter. Okay. Okay. So some examples of this would be if you're repeating parts of words or whole words. So sat, sat, Saturday, uh, just to try and get those words out. You hear that? hesitation there. Um, there's also sound prolongation. So when they're holding on to a sound before they can get that word out. So mm, more. Uh, you'll commonly see some secondary behaviors with this, like that blinking or the head nod forward. Like motor or verbal text. That, that's yes. what we call it. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there might even be interjections um, that become frequent. We all use interjections naturally in speech, but it's when they're consistent. So. Um, when um, um, last um, weekend we um, went to the mall, and it really impacts that message that the listener is getting. Okay. The reality, also, from the problems of the inability to communicate, we have some examples. The number one is that the child stuttering, which is the year he gets a certain word, and the child starts to make a lot of mistakes. Like the word, for example, he wants to say "friend," so he says "friend." So that that takes a long time, and the child starts to make a lot of في حرف معين الحاجة الثانية قالت اللي ممكن يبقى فيها مشكلة شوية تطويل الكلام ان انا مثلا عايز اخرج برا بياخدها بشكل طويل جدا الحاجة الثالثة انه بيدخل احيانا حروف في الوسط بتبقى ملهاش علاقة بالكلمة خالص وده كله بيأثر على فكرة انه اللي قدامك يفهمك الحقيقة احنا كده اتكلمنا على مشاكل اللغة او مشاكل سبيتش الحديث او مشاكل اللغة اللي هي طريقة التخاطب أو مشاكل انسيابية الكلام الحقيقة السؤال اللي بيشغل بال كل أب وكل أم هو إمتى أبتدي أقلق أو أحس إنه ابني متأخر um, So, Narissa, when should any parent come concerned or start worrying that my child is, has some delay in speech or language or disorders? So, as a parent, I always say trust your instincts, you know your child best but we want to go back and look at those developmental milestones. Yeah, as instead of just following the instincts, let's give them landmarks. Definitely. When should we be concerned? Yeah, so it's just because in that early stage there is some variety. But so by around 12 months of age, um, if your child is not using gestures, not responding to his name, if your child is not using that babbling, you're not hearing some of those early developing sounds in his speech productions, that's concerning at that age. Okay. Uh, by 18 months of age, 
Uh, if your child doesn't understand those simple commands, come here, go over there, um, or if they're not identifying body parts, that can be very concerning. So by 18 months, kids should be able to identify their body parts. Early, early body parts, those uh, touch your nose, your ears, those basic ones they have access to. You can practice those daily. Okay. Um, if your child is not talking or only using a few words by two years of age, that's a definite red flag for a language delay. And since we mentioned landmarks, you said by two years they use few words. How many words we're talking about here? So, like we said before, by two years we're anticipating a vocabulary of 100 to 300 words. So your child may not be there, but they may have 50 words or 70, and you're seeing they're making the progress. But if you're seeing there's not a lot of variety and there's not a lot of that communication intent, and there's limited words, especially if they're only using one word at a time, that's a big concern. Okay. By two to three, um, at two also, you should start seeing them joining those words together. And if they're only able to use those single words, that's a warning sign. And if they don't have that robust vocabulary to support them, it's going to be hard to pair those words together. Okay. Um, go ahead. And at four, so we're going to keep going. So. By four, all of those things, so they should be asking and answering questions. If you're not seeing that, that's a concern. And their speech intelligibility should be improving. So if you're seeing that they're not understood, you definitely want to get that checked out. Okay. Um, so that's up to four years, and we'll continue after I translate. Okay, like perfect. The question that I always ask all the parents and all the mothers, when do I start to know that my child is early and needs مساعدة أو محتاج إنه حد يشوفه. الحقيقة قالت لي نبتدي نقلق لو على 12 شهر أو تقريبا إنه ابننا أو بنتنا يتموا السنة الأولى ما بيبتدوش يطلعوا الحروف دي أو أتليست يبقى عندهم ثلاث كلمات يعني يقدروا يقولوهم وبالذات الحروف ال 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 البي والدي والإن اللي هو الباء والدال والنون تحديدا لو ما بيقدروش يطلعوا الحروف دي عند سن 12 سنة بشكل مظبوط هنا بعرف إنه في مشكلة. الحقيقة قالت كمان عند سن سنتين وده مهم جدا لما الطفل يتم سنتين المفروض يبقى أتليس تقريبا عنده خمسين كلمة بيقدر يقولهم بشكل مختلف كمان بيقدر يتبع تعليمات بابا وأمه زي مثلا تعالى هنا أو روح هناك ابتدي البس هدومك عشان هنخرج الحاجات دي المهم الطفل كمان بيبقى يبتدي يفهمها كمان يبتدي يفهم الإيحاءات بتاع أبو وأمه لما يقولوا له يلا هتتشال يبقى الطفل فاهم ده كويس وكمان يبقى عارف اسمه لما تناديه بيه. الحقيقه عند سن سنتين لثلاثه زي ما هي قالت زي ما انا قلت مهم جدا انه ممكن في اطفال بتنمي لحد 200 كلمه بس قالت لو عنده من 50 ل 100 كلمه ده بيبقى كويس لو ما عندوش دول يبقى فعلا الطفل محتاج يشوف حد اخصائي تخاطب. كمان مهم جدا قالت من سن ثلاثه لاربعه مهم جدا ان الطفل يبتدي ينطق او يقول جملتين او كلمتين جنب بعض في جمله يعني جمله مكونه من كلمتين عشان ده مهم جدا لو ده ما ابتداش يحصل بيبقى برضه في مشكله. What other signs that indicate that we should be concerned as a parent? So about uh, by five years of age, you should understand most of your child's message. So if they're missing words, and maybe you understand them, but it's starting to kind of impact them, that's a concern. So if you hear something like, Mama, park, go outside, they're missing words that could miscommunicate their understanding in different settings. They don't deliver the full message. Exactly, and okay. they're missing some of those key vocabulary, using articles and, their, and auxiliary verbs in their sentences that they should have by that age. Okay. Um, if they're... At this age, six, seven years old, we're anticipating that they're going to have most of their speech sounds, including some of those later developing sounds they should be starting to hit. So those S, R, those TH sounds, they're later developing, but we should be starting to hear those. Okay. Um, and if your child's embarrassed or worried about it, you're definitely going to want to be concerned and get them some support. Because it affects his, his or her personality and self-esteem. Yeah, uh, Of course. 
And um, at any time when we see that language is not used with communicative intent, that's a concern. So if they're saying words but it's not directed to someone, or if they really spend a lot of time repeating words that they've heard on TV but it doesn't have intent or excitement to them, it's just a rip repetition, that's not a proper way to use language and that's a red flag. And if we see at any point that they've had language skills and there's loss, that's a huge red flag that there's something going on that you want to look out for. The fact that many of the things that make every father and every mother the need to start to look at someone or a mistake or a doctor start to look at them is that the need to start in five years to understand the child's child completely, the message of the child is clear. If the child is not able to get the message of the child in a very clear way, then we definitely need to get the child 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 to get the child. آه كمان مهم جدا انه عند سن ستة او سبع سنين آه بيبقى الطفل بيتكلم بانسيابيه ما فيش اي لدغات آه ولو في مشكله في الحروف دي زي ما احنا قلنا تحديدا ال السين او الره في اللغه زي ما بنشوف في لدغات كتيره في الجزء ده آه ديفينتلي انت محتاج آه يعني نصيحه او ان انت تتكلم مع اخصائي لو عند سن ستة او سبع سنين آه واللدغات دي بدات تظهر بشكل كامل أو بشكل عام قالت عند سن ست أو سبع سنين لو الطفل مش قادر يبقى عنده كونفرزيشن أو حوار كامل مع أبوه أمه ويقدر يحكي اللي حصل في المدرسة بتاعته يبقى حوار كامل ومفهوم سواء من الأب والأم أو سواء من الناس اللي مش عارفين الطفل ده يقدروا يفهموا حديثه بالكامل بيبقى ده مهم جدا جدا جدا. Um, sometimes the numbers uh, are more accurate. So when it comes to speech or language disorders, uh, what are the statistics or prevalence of those disorders? So studies vary, but it's estimated that approximately 10% of all preschool children have a speech and language disorder. Most of the speech and language disorders are in that language piece, so that's about 60% have a language disorder. Um, a smaller percentage is those articulation and phonological disorders we talked about where they're having that low speech intelligibility and articulation errors. That's about 20 to 25%. And we're talking here in the preschool stage, right? Yes. Like the age between four to six years old. Yes, yeah, about two to, well, I would say even two to five. Two to five, yeah, okay. Yeah, but before that, school-age children. Okay. And then there's voice disorders impacting even less. Most of the disorders, though, um, that are identified as they get older start as that late talking toddler. Okay. The fact that she said a few things, it's very beautiful. She said, as I said, in the beginning of the episode, 10% of children in the middle of the school, not before the school, have a problem in the language. أنا آسف في السبيتش في الكلام نفسه ستين في المية بيبقى عندهم مشاكل في اللغة وإنسيابيتها ولكن قالت إن كل ده بيتحسن بعد الكلام قالت إنه ممكن يبقى شكل من الأشكال ده إنه الطفل يبقى متأخر في الكلام ولكن عموما بعد سن سنتين المفروض الطفل يبتدي ينطلق ويبتدي يتكلم بشكل أب نرسا when we talk about uh, like speech and language disorders what are the common features of speech and language disorders that most of the kids or the children share Okay, so some of the features are um, they're quiet as an infant, so they're not using that babbling early on. You'll notice that that's con kind of consistent when they get identified as having a language disorder. It's common for kids with a uh, language disorder to have a history of hearing infections and frequent colds. This impacts their hearing of all that language during that time where they're taking it in and their ability to produce those speech sounds. They typically will have a less consonants in their repertoire than typically developing peers. So they may just have a few of those simple sounds, but not more of those other sounds that you start to see as they get older. They use limited gestures to communicate. So gestures are some of our precursors to language. And kids point, and they request up, and they can show sizes. And kids with a speech or language disorder won't be using as many, and they'll be hesitant to communicate, even if that means that they could get something that they need. There's not a lot of imitation, so we anticipate imitation of words and sounds, and even actions of adults. And you'll see that that imitation is not there when there's a language disorder or a language delay. And you'll see limited variety in the vo vocabulary, both in the types of 
vocabulary they're using, but also you'll see that they have limited quantity in their vocabulary. For another piece is that understanding. Typically they are delayed in those following directions. They have a hard time pointing to pictures in books uh, and they won't be pairing those words together. الاصوات اللي بيطلعوها دي وزي ما احنا قلنا البي والام والان دي من الحاجات المهمه جدا لو الاصوات دي ما طلعوهاش في سن بدري جدا بيبقى في مشكله الحاجه الثانيه فكره انه التقليد الاب والام احيانا لما بيعملوا حاجات بنلاقي الاطفال بتقلدها لو البيبي مش بيقلد الحاجات دي بتبقى في مشكله لو ما بيستخدمش الايماءات او الايحاءات انه اللي احنا قلناها في الاول بيبقى في مشكله في التاخير او في النطق فكرة انه يفولو الدايركشن او الكوماندز بتاع بابا ومامته لما بيقولوا له البس هنخرق الحاجات دي كلها لازم يبقى فاهمها او يبتدي يفهمها زي ما انا قلت خصوصا بعد سن سنتين كمان قالت انه لما نلاقي انه الكلمات اللي بينطقها مش كتير وخصوصا بعد سن سنتين هنا ديفنتلي احنا محتاجين حد يتدخل ويبقى في اخصائي تخاطب الحقيقه ال 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 اللي هنتكلم عليه في الجزء الثاني من حلقتنا هو فكرة أنه إزاي ده ممكن يأثر على أولادنا والأب والأم يعملوا إيه عشان يساعدوا طفلهم في المنطقة دي وإزاي نروح لأخصائي تخاطب وكمان أخصائي تخاطب قادر يعمل إيه كمان حاجات مهمة جدا هنتكلم عليها عن طرق العلاج والتعامل مع مشاكل تأخر النطق في الأطفال ولكن بعد البريك اللي هناخده وهنرجع نكلم حضراتكم لو حضراتكم عندكم أي أسئلة كلمونا في التليفون او ابعتوا لنا على الفيسبوك هناخد كل اسئله حضراتكم في الجزء الاخير من حلقتنا النهارده وايت كوت بعد البريك I'm Dr. Kirti Sundar, Chief Medical Officer of Breezers Recovery and Wellness in beautiful Riverside, California. I design breezers with the philosophy of treating the whole person with cutting-edge transcranial magnetic stimulation, neurofeedback, and customized addiction-specific mindfulness meditation. Relapse prevention is at the heart of our state-of-the-art program and brain optimization with our proprietary method is the key to building resilience and experiencing joy and success. Please visit us at www.breezersrecovery.com. اهلا بحضراتكم في اخر جزء من برنامجنا النهارده عن مشاكل تاخر النطق والكلام في الاطفال. هي حلقه مهمه جدا تبقى مهمه لكل الاباء والامهات. هنتكلم على ازاي ده بيأثر على اولادنا من الناحيه النفسيه وعلى كمان على اللونج ران على مستقبلهم الدراسي كمان مهم جدا هنتكلم على اهم نقطه اللي كل الناس مستنياها طرق العلاج وازاي الاب والام ممكن يبقوا جزء مهم جدا في طرق العلاج للاطفال دي. نريسا uh, when we talk about uh, speech and language disorders there is common difficulties most of our children uh, share. Uh, so what are those common difficulties? So some difficulties might be that they struggle to get their messages across, and that is that they're attempting communication, but they're not getting the message across. Um, sometimes this could be because of vague vocabulary use. So 
that one, that one, that one, and you're trying to get an idea, but you but can't you get there. Right. They may have difficulty interacting with peers, and they may not be interacting at all because of limited language use. So you start to see that limited interaction kind of early in them. Okay. And there's breakdowns in their communication. So maybe they're sending you a long message, but they're not understood, and their communication partner is, huh, or repeating back, and they're not really getting their message across because their speech isn't clear, or the language or those vocabulary words aren't there. Um. For you. We have the first phone call from Cairo, Egypt. Okay. Uh, Nermeen, Fadali. Hello? 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 Fadali, how are you? Are you? Okay. Okay. وكمية الكلمات كمان قليلة جدا كم كلمة تقريبا آه توتال؟ ممكن نقول مبي حوالي 15 عشر. 15 عشرين كلمة واضحين بيطلعوا بشكل واضح؟ اه أو يعني الى حد كبير بس هي اكتر بيبقى المق... آه اوكي انت انت سؤالك اذا هو فعلا محتاج يشوف حد ولا She has um, a two and a half years old kid, mm -hmm. and he's using only 15 to 20 words at the most. Okay. Not all of them are clear, so she's asking for advice. If you advise her to see somebody, or he's delayed, or absolutely. So two and a half, like we said, we should start to see that vocabulary grow, 100 to 300 words. If there's, he's only putting single words together, and the vocabulary is limited. I would absolutely seek out professional help. There could be someone that could help him. She's back again. Okay. So, I'll have to take. I'm going to ask her if she has to give a direct look or not. The fear. Why the fear from the last year and four months? Will she have to give me a key? Or will she have to stay under three months? Okay. So, her question is: Does he need any kind of behavioral modification or cognitive behavioral treatment, or she needs to see speech language pathologist uh, because he's late? And what are the expected results? So uh, I would absolutely, based on what, how she's describing her son, seek out help from a speech pathologist. Uh, it, he seems like a good candidate to work on some of those early language strategies. The results would be that you would have him start pairing words together and become a stronger communicator to get that message across. And part of our message today that parents can be part of the treatment plan, right? And then they should be. Okay. It's a huge piece. Um, Nermin Zama Alit Narissa, um, uh, ديفنتلي 15 ل 20 كلمه قليل جدا في السن ده المفروض يبقى تقريبا عنده لحد 200 كلمه بيقولهم ديفنتلي uh, محتاجه تشوفي حد اخصائي تخاطب ده مهم جدا وقالت انه النتائج بتبقى حلوه جدا uh, خصوصا ان احنا بنحط الاب والام كجزء من uh, خطه العلاج دي وهنقول دلوقتي في حلقتنا بعد كام دقيقه ازاي الاب والام والاسره uh, هم الجزء الاكبر uh, في خطه العلاج دي uh, Narissa, back to the common difficulties uh, they share between kids. Uh, so what are those difficulties again? So some other difficulties they might have is difficulties with academics. You'll start to see difficulties with reading and writing later in life. You think about speaking and understanding. These are the foundational skills. It's ultimately words on paper. And so if they have weaknesses early, it's going to translate to later in life difficulties. Okay. And they also can be teased or left out by peers because they appear different. And sometimes peers pick up on that and they tease them. Uh, it, it increased their violence too sometimes they're toward the other kids. So. Yes, yeah. Okay. Uh, المشاكل اللي بيقابلها الاطفال اللي عندهم تاخر في النطق بشكل عام رقم واحد ان هم بيبقى عندهم صعوبات في توصيل المسج او توصيل الرساله اللي هم عايزين يقولوها لكل حواليهم للاب للام للاخوات لو هم في حضانه بيبقى عندهم مشكله في ده كمان بيخلي عندهم مشاكل في التخاطب او انه يبقى عنده علاقه مع زمايله اللي موجودين في المدرسه حاجه مهمه جدا انه بيتاخر عنده فكره القرايه والكتابه بتخليهم يتاخروا كمان ده بيخلي عنده نوع من العنف تجاه زمايله اللي موجودين في المدرسه لانه بيجيت فرستريتد لانه مش بيحاول يقول لهم حاجه بس اللي حواليه مش فاهمينه فده بيخلي عنده نسبه عنف 
اقوى من يعني اكتر من اللي حواليه نتيجه انه بيحاول يوصل المسج بتاعته ومحدش فاهمه او محدش عارف هو عايز يقول ايه بالظبط فده بيخليه اكتر عنفا هنيجي للجزء المهم وده اللي كل الناس مستنياه فكره العلاج ازاي العلاج وازاي الاسره الخطوات اللي تاخدها الاسره عشان تبقى جزء من العلاج So now the most important part, the strategies and management uh, and the treatment. So what are the management and the strategies to support the child's speech and how can the family, I think the family should be the cornerstone of the treatment, of course, plus the, the speech language pathologist. Definitely. So what are the strategies that the family can So I'll support? start by sharing some strategies that can be used if your child has been identified as having the language delay or that you can just use from birth at home that can be helpful either way. And then we'll go into some specific strategies that you may see the speech pathologist use and you can help carry over. And in this part particularly, I will translate one by one to make it more specific, more clear message to the families. Okay, right? perfect. So. Um, you're, as a parent, the caregiver plays a big role in language development. So from early on, you want to start talking to your child from, from birth at the very beginning. When babies coo and goo or when they cry and they get that response from their caregiver, that's their first learning that they have to interact to communicate and it increases their desire to do so when they're responding. Okay. And I want you to look always at the cameras here because okay. it's we need to deliver a clear message for the family how Perfect. to be part of the treatment. Okay. Number one, you told me to start talking from day one. We need to start talking to our children, mm -hmm. right? Yes. The uh, important thing ان هم يتكلموا بشكل صح ويبقى عندهم طرق تخاطب بشكل صح رقم واحد قالت انه نتكلم مع اطفالنا من اول يوم اول ما يبتدي يلاقي نفسه او يعيط او يعمل اي حاجة نتكلم مع اطفالنا حتى لو مش فاهمين قالت انه مهم جدا انه من دي وان نبتدي نتكلم مع اطفالنا ونوجه لهم كلام ونتحاور معهم كأنهم فاهمين بالزبط نمبر تي so another strategy is to respond to their early vocal engagements, their coos and their babbling, as if they're talking to you. So turn and have a conversation with them, even though it's not true words yet. تاني حاجة نعتبر إنه ال 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 اللي هو زي ما بنقول الطفل بيلاقي نفسه أو بيقول أي كلام في سن صغير بالذات فترة أول ست شهور نعتبرها إن هي رسالة موجهة ليك فريسبوند أو رد على الكلام ده وتكلم قلنا مع طفلك. عادي جدا كأنه في حوار طبيعي جدا بين كنتو الاثنين. Okay. What else? Another strategy is that when your child engages with you, look at them and listen attentively and give them time to respond after you interact. Don't kind of rush through it. الحاجة الثالثة المهمة جدا 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 إنه تكون مستمع جيد. استمع لابنك. لما ابنك يكلمه قالت مهم جدا إنه تبقى عين الاي كونتاكت عينك في عينه وتسمع له كويس جدا. وتنصت له طول ما هو بيتكلم حتى لو بيقول اي كلام مهم جدا ان انت تعلمه لغه التخاطب او الحوار انه دايما عينك في عينه وتسمع له بشكل كويس لو سالته اسئله مهم جدا ان انت بتدي له وقته عشان يرد وما تحاولش ان انت تستعجل الحوار انا عارف انه الحياه بقت كلها سريعه وصعبه ولكن تربيه اولادنا هو اهم استثمار ممكن نستثمر فيه Another strategy is to read books with them daily. Books have prevent, are present with a rich vocabulary. It opens them to a lot of new vocabulary experiences, and they're usually engaging for children. Uh, before I translate this, we have a call from New Jersey. Uh, Dina, tfaddali. Uh, Dina? Hi. 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 سنتين وثمان شهور اوكي والكلام بتاعها قليل ومش بتعمل ريسبونس لاي حد بينادي عليها بس انا اوريدي ابتديت سبيتش و اوكوبيشن ثيرابي معاها سبيتش وايه معلش؟ انا مش سامعك اوكوبيشن ثيرابي اوكوبيشن ثيرابي اوكي والمشكلة هي دلوقتي اكتشفنا ان هي عندها فلويد في ودنها اوكي فهل الفلود ده احنا لسه ما عملناش ان احنا نعمل عمليه نحط تيوب وكده هل الفلود ده هو اللي مأثر على الكلام وان هي مش ريسبونس لاي حد 
Um, her child is 20 months old and uh, she's not communicating well, a uh, few vocabularies. And uh, she has probably otitis media with effusion and they're willing to put a tube. She's asking, could be that fluid uh, in the middle ear like part of the problem? Yes, definitely. Any time that you're having ear issues with hearing and they, there might be that buildup, it can impact their language development because they're not hearing words the same way and they're also not hearing those speech sounds the same way. So typically in most of our kiddos that have a hearing impairment or hearing loss, we will see a language delay and therapy is definitely warranted. Dina, if you listen to me, as I said, it's about one of the things that we do before we do anything, we always do an examination for the child. Uh, واحيانا لو الطفل اكبر شويه بنعمل له اختبار ذكاء ونشوف فكره التخاطب بتاعه فده مهم جدا ان احنا رقم واحد بنستبعد اي مشكله في الاذن uh, زي ما زي ما نوريسا قالت انه الفلويد اللي موجود او السائل اللي موجود في الاذن الوسطى ده بيبقى فعلا عامل مشكله كبيره حتى لو حطيتي تيوب بعد كده هتشوفي تحسن كبير جدا لانه ده سبب uh, وجزء كبير جدا من المشكله وربنا uh, معاها ان شاء الله um, so back to number four. Okay. Uh, but before, uh, I want to confirm this. Before okay. we do anything or speech language pathology or to see anybody, mm -hmm. we have to check their ears and rule out any kind of biological problems. Or, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and sometimes you may take the step to go see the speech pathologist and they'll refer you back to go see an audiologist or an ears, nose, and throat specialist. Um, so, Tani, when we get the message deep in a very good way, it's important that we don't stop any problems. في السمع قبل ما نروح او نبتدي كل الخطوات دي. اوكي باك تو ذا ستراتيجيز اور ذا تريتمنت. اوكي سو اذر ستراتيجيز ذات يو كان يوز از تو توك اباوت وات يور دوينج ثرو اوت ذا داي اند يوز جيسترز وذ ات. سو اف يور كوكينج يو كان ساي وير غونا تيك ذا فيجيتابلز اوت اوف ذا ريفريجريتر اند ليتس بوت ذيم اون ذا كاونتر اند وير غونا ريتش اب هاي سو وي كان جيت اور بيج بول. سو يور نوت اكسبكتينج يور تشايلد تو يوز اول ذيس ووردز بوت يور اكسبوزينج يور تشايلد تو ذيس فرايتي اوف لانجويج. سو اكسبلين يور سيلف اند اكسبلين يور ديلي اكتيفيتيز. And we tend to get caught up in what we're doing to just kind of go, but it just get you just got to get used to talking aloud all the time. Hala khastani la alito rakam wahed ashan da muhim jidan in enta tatalim tisma la auladak u tatalim ibe andak lugat tachatub bilain maahum u yhis in enta mrakiz maah u tisma lo rakam tnein in no lazim tuqim huar maah ibnak min awl yom min awl maigi lil haa ibnak au bintak lazim tbtedi tkalim hum ka in hum fahmin kulli in enta btulu ashan yhisu in no tachatub da shi muhim. ثالث نقطة وده المهم جدا انه نقرا كتب يوميا. Uh, I'm sorry I'll go back to uh, to read the books daily. What kind of books can they read and So you want to kind of watch your child. You want to read at their level. So if they're having if they're two three words Go a little bit beyond that. See if they can stay engaged. Now, if you see that your child can't stay engaged in those books that have longer sentences or longer passages, that may be because they're not understanding the language. So go back to something that has a lot of pictures, that's rich in colors, that they can still relate to so they can pick up those words. كمان قالت إن إحنا نقرأ كتب حتى لو لأطفالنا حتى لو هم مش فاهمين ده بس كتب يبقى فيها ملونة فيها صور كتير. وتبتدي انت تحكي القصه من نفسك وتعرض طفلك انه تو اكسبوزم انه يسمع كل اللي انت بتقوله. النقطه الخامسه المهمه جدا واللي قالتها انه اشرح نفسك اشرح كل اللي انت بتعمله لابنك حتى لو آه انت مش محتاج تعمل ده يعني مثلا لو امه وابنها سنتين او ثلاثه في البيت آه عنده تاخر في الكلام مهم جدا انه الام حتى وهي بتطبخ تشرح هي بتعمل ايه. احنا دلوقتي مثلا هنطلع ده من الثلاجه ونجيب ده من الدولاب ونحطهم على بعض ودلوقتي احنا بنحاول نعمل الاكله كذا اللي انت بتحبها كل ده انا بشرح لابني بقول له بعرضه ان هو يسمع كلام كتير مهم جدا انه زي ما انا قلت الاب والام هم اهم نقطه في علاج الاطفالنا بالذات اللي عندهم تاخر في النطق او الكلام فمهم جدا انه احنا نشرح دايما بنعمل ايه Uh, وانا بغسل uh, اشرح ان انا بغسل وهنطلع الهدوم اللي مش نظيفه من الدولاب ومش ونغسلها و... وانا بطبخ اشرح انا بعمل ايه وانا بنظف انا بنظف التلفزيون اللي بيجي فيه الافلام اللي انت بتحبها يعني دايما اشرح نفسي وانا بعمل كل حاجه لانه ده بيخلي الاطفال ينتبهوا اوكي okay. okay. uh, other strategies so other strategies is to play toys and games with your child 
So when you're playing games and with different toys, it's teaching them those early turn-taking skills, which translates later into our conversation skills. We go back and forth, and they start to learn that turn-taking is an important part. نقطة كمان مهمة جدا قالتها أنا نسيت ترجمها إن إحنا دائما نستخدم الإيماءات والإيحاءات مع أولادنا وأنا بتكلم إذا أنا مثلا حابب أحضنه أو أرفعه أو أشيله أنا دلوقتي هشيلك وأستخدم أوضح بإيدي إيه اللي بيحصل نقطة تانية مهمة جدا قالت إن أنا أستخدم اللعب العادية جدا وأشرح لإبني إيه الجيمز ويعني أدخل في أنشطة معاه عشان أخليه يدخل في حوار أو حديث وأشرح كل ده وأنا بلعب مع إبني Okay. Um, and with that said, and with my next strategy, we want to always remember that your motivation is key to developing language. So right. if your child is not interested in the toy or the game that you've picked out, you need to figure out what it is that's going to motivate them. Make them interested somehow. Make them interested <laughs> any way you can. So right. you can sing songs with them, you can do nursery rhymes, you can play finger games like patty cake or peekaboo. And you want them to be engaged because when they're engaged, that's when they're going to be listening to you and picking up on language the most. Uh, uh, go ahead. And another way to do this is to teach some of those animal or environmental sounds. So, what does the cow say? Okay. Moo. And that helps with those speech production sounds or also. So, picking up on those early sounds as well as language. Okay. The uh, truth is also one of the tools that are very important in communication with the situation is that you always sing with your children, sing with different songs, or you play with them games that we play with our children and we try to get them to listen to the language. This is also very important. She also said that it is also one of the tools that you can let them get faster in order to تستخدم الحيوانات وكل اللي حواليك في البيئة إن إحنا مثلا العصفورة بتقول إيه أو الكلب بيقول إيه القطة الحاجات دي كلها لأنه ده بيخلي إنه ابنك يجد إنجيجد معاك في حوارات وبيتعلم أسرع يمكن عن طريق الصوت أو الأغاني أسرع من أي حد تاني What else are there strategies? Um, and finally, in this piece, before we get into the specific strategies you might see your speech pathologist use, um, I just want to say don't insist that your child say every word correctly. You want them to continue to be motivated to communicate, so you don't want to insist on them using language if they're not ready, and you don't want to be correcting them all the time. Instead, take a step back if they say something that's wrong, and just repeat it and be a good model and so they can hear that. Uh, so basically take the pressure off them. Exactly. So don't force them to do Yeah, stuff. don't put the pressure on them when they're trying to. Especially them. sometimes the whole entire family, four or five people, they're waiting for him or her to say something, and that puts up a lot of pressure. Exactly. The uh, حقيقة آخر نقطة في ال في الطرق العلاج ودي من أهم أهم النقط uh, اللي أنا بشوف إنه كتير مننا كعائلات بتتعامل معها غلط قالت ما تحطش ابنك تحت ضغط يعني ما تقولش حاجة وتصر إنه هو لازم ينطقها وتقعد مستنيه وخصوصا أنا عارف إنه العائلات عندنا الأب والأم أحيانا وتيتا وجد والجيران والحاجات اللطيفة دي بيعودوا كلهم قدام الطفل. ومستنيين وينطق ويقعدوا كلهم يقولوا الكلام ومستنيين ينطق نفس الكلام تاني باك ما تحطش الطفل تحت الضغط ده لو الطفل مش عارف ينطق او مش عارف يقول اتس اوكي okay. اتحرك ونبتدي نلاقي كلمه تانيه نبتدي نلاقي طرق حوار تانيه انما عشان اربعه خمسه يقعدوا قدام الطفل متنحين قدامه ومستنيينه ان هو ينطق الكلمه اللي لسه متقاله وعشان اول ما ينطق نصها ولا حاجه يقعدوا يسقفوا ده بيحط ضغط كتير جدا على اطفالنا مهم جدا ان احنا نشيل الضغط ده من عليهم عشان يتصرفوا بحرية أكبر لو مش عارف ينطق دلوقتي it's okay هنحاول مرة تانية وقت تاني بس مش لازم كل الناس تبقى مستنية قاعدة مستنية أنه الطفل ده ينطق وكل واحد يقول نفس الكلمة تاني لأنه ده بيخليه أنه هو عليه ضغط كبير ومستني كل الناس دي أنه هو ينطق فده مش مفروض نحط الضغط ده على أطفالنا دي الطرق اللي ممكن تستخدم من الأب والأم في البيت دلوقتي هنروح لنقطة إزاي أخصائي التخاطب يقدر يتعامل مع ده وإيه الطرق اللي بيستخدمه now that's the family rule, the dad and mom rule. How the speech pathologists are dealing with the kids in those situations? Like, what you guys are doing, basically. So here's some other strategies we might use that, like we said, you should be engaged in therapy. You should sit in sessions, and then you can carry these over at home. So one of them we use is called the plus one routine. So it's the goal is to increase your child's utterance, so what they're using. Um, so what if your child says dog, you get repeat back and you add on one more word and you can really put an emphasis on that word you're adding so big dog so they hear it back but you're not going to anticipate that they're repeating you right away right 
الحقيقه قالت من الرق... من الحاجات اللي بيستخدمها الاخصائيين التخاطب هي بيسموها قاعده زائد واحد آه وهي بيزكلي انه لما الطفل مثلا بيقدر يقول كلب يقولوا كلب كبير آه دايما بيضيفوا كلمه للكلمه بتاع الطفل مش متوقع قالت انه الطفل يقولها تاني ولكن بيبقى اخصائي التخاطب عارف ايه الكلام اللي هيقدر يضيفه ايه الكلمه الزياده اللي هيقدر يضيفها وحتى ممكن نستخدم ده في البيوت اذا نقدر نعمل ده اذا ابني بيقول مثلا كلمه ورده بس فاقول له لا ورده حلوه وتاني ما احطش البريشر عليه انه لازم ينطقها ولكن دايما كل كلمه اضيف له كلمه قصادها بحيث ان انا اوسع مفرداته. Uh, what other uh, strategies that you use? So the next strategy we call the three to one rule. As adults and parents in the environment, we tend to ask so many questions. And we're just trying to see kind of where they're at. But we want to switch. So for every question we ask, we're making three comments. Because questions can often make your child feel overwhelmed if they don't have that language or the response to it. So an example here is if you're say, playing with Play-Doh at home, right? You can say, let's make a snake. What color should it be? So you can ask them an open-ended question where they do have to give you something back. We want red. Then you want to make, make sure you have two more comments. Oh, I made a very long snake. That was a great job. Yeah. So decrease those questions. And if they can't answer the question, that open-ended question, give them choices. Do you want red or do you want blue? So basically switch the questions to conversations. Exactly. Okay. قالت كمان من الحاجات المهمه جدا اللي نقدر نستخدمها بدل ما تركز على فكره ان انت يعني تسال اطفالك اسئله ومتوقع ان هم يجاوبوها ومتخيل ان هو ده الحوار لا انا ادخل في الحوار واقلل عدد الاسئله خالص قالت من الحاجات المهمه جدا اللي نقدر نستخدمها البلاي دو او اللي بنسميه التين الصلصال تين الصلصال قالت مهم جدا في مساعده الاطفال تقدر تجيب التين الصلصال وتلعب وتعمل منه أشكال مختلفة وبدل ما تسأله أنت عايز تعمل إيه اشرح قول له مثلا إحنا هنبني عربية كبيرة ولونها كذا والله لونها جميل حول فكرة أن أنت قاعد تسأل طفلك أنت عايز تعمل إيه بدأ وبدأ وبدأ إلى أنه conversations إلى حوار مع طفلك إحنا هناخد ده وهنعمل دي وشكلها حلو واللون ده فركز ان انت بدل ما تقعد تسال ابنك او بنتك اسئله ركز ان انت تنتقل لفكره الحوار معاه Do we have any other strategies? Yeah, another strategy we can use is communicative temptation. So the goal of this is to motivate your child to want to speak or to speak with you. So an example of this might be handing them a jar of bubbles that's closed and then waiting to see what they do. If they're not speaking to you yet, they may just hand it to you and they're engaging with you when you can provide that language. Oh, let's open the bubble jar. Or it gives them that opportunity to say, I need help to open this. Uh, we have some questions on Facebook before I translate this. First of all, they talk about the bilingual parents. Okay. Uh, if, let's say, we're speaking Arabic in, in American society, would that affect uh, the process of... No, you might see um, them meeting milestones a little bit later, but that's normal. And there might be sometimes a little bit more of a silent period when they're hearing both the languages. But as speech pathologists, we 100% encourage bilingual uh, families. What you want to do is from birth, if you have the opportunity, if you have exposure to both English and the other language, speak them equally 50% of the time and get them exposure so to both languages. So it's okay to, like, to speak more than one language uh, and that absolutely. wouldn't confuse them? No, it's the best time to do it. Their brain's ready for it. <laughs> okay, from what age to what age? So the prime time for them to develop that second language, even if we find out later that there's an impairment or a disorder, is birth to five. Their brain's ready to learn at that time. زي مثلا هنا في كتير قوي بيتكلموا سبانيش وانجليزي احنا كمجتمعات شرقيه بنتكلم عربي وانجليزي قالت عادي جدا ان احنا نتكلم اللغتين لانه مخ الطفل في السن ده ممكن ياخر شويه التطور اللغوي بتاعه ولكن اتس اوكي okay ان احنا نتكلم اللغتين ما فيش اي مشاكل عشان كتير مننا كان متخيل ان احنا لازم نتكلم لغه واحده لا لو حضرتك بتتكلم عربي وانجليزي افضل اتكلم عربي وانجليزي زي ما انا قلت ممكن نلاقي تاخر شويه في النمو اللغوي ولكن بيستوعبوها وقالت ان مخهم ريدي جدا ان هو يستوعب الحاجات دي في سن من صفر من يوم الميلاد يعني لسن خمس سنين. 
Another question we have on Facebook, a three years old kid, and he's speaking only like five words total. Um, your recommendations? My recommendation for him is definitely to seek out a speech pathologist and he only has about five words. Like we said, by three years old he should be asking and answering questions. We should see a vocabulary of at least 300 words or more. He should be pairing words together. My recommendation is to start using these strategies we've talked about at home, but also to go seek professional help as soon as possible. Uh, قالت انه ديفنتلي محتاج ان انت تشوف سبيتش سبيتش لانجويج باثولوجيست اند اف هي ليفز ان كاليفورنيا نريس از براكتسينج ان فاونتن فالي اوكي سو ناو وي توكت اباوت ذا سبيتش ثيرابيست وات ذا سبيتش لانجويج باثولوجيست كان دو رايت سو وات ار اذر وايز تو انكارج سبيتش ان تولرز سو If your child is not super motivated to talk or um, not enthusiastic, some strategies that you can use is to observe your child actively. Observe what they're interested in. Get down to their level. Lay on the ground with them. See what toy they're reaching out to. Then use some of those other strategies that you had. Start commenting and narrating on what they're doing. Um, you want to consistently respond to anything they do. So if your child does actions, they're jumping, jump with them and use the language during that time. Comment and expand on anything he or she says. كمان قالت من الحاجات المهمة جدا اللي كل أب وكل أم لازم يعملوها لازم تبقى ملاحظ جيد لابنك إيه الحاجات اللي بت بتستهوي وحاول تبقى تعملها معاه وتدخل معاه في حوار الحاجة الثانية المهمة إن أنت دائما زي ما أنا قلت أي حاجة بيقولها أو بيعملها أو حتى الإحاقات اللي بيعملها استجيب ليها وادخل معاه في حوار مهم جدا ولازم نخصص من 15 ل 30 دقيقة. يوميا ان احنا نتكلم مع اولادنا وده مهم جدا جدا جدا. My last question for the day and um, I'm telling everybody you're with us the next episode too we'll talk about the same uh, speech and language problems and we'll add autism to it. Uh, why parents should seek sp um, uh, like speech therapy for their kids? So you should speak seek out speech therapy for your kids from professional because The skills that they're learning early on are their foundation for what they're getting later on. So if we're not addressing this at a young age, we might not see them make those steps they need as they get older. And if you have a speech pathologist, they're going to help you with identify exactly where the breakdown is. They're going to be able to provide treatment that it's evidence-based for your child. And they'll even be able to help you if you need other interventions. Maybe they need some behavioral therapy or some occupational or sensory therapy. They might be able to help you make those recommendations. The truth is, I have a question for all of you. If there is a change, you have to see the change. The change is that the change or the language is the idea of the interaction with the society. The interaction with the front is important. It's important that we will build on them all their future. سواء الدراسي او العملي بعدين فمهم جدا ان احنا نشوف اخصائي تخاطب اول ما نلاحظ او نتبع فكره التطور اللي احنا شرحناه في البدايه. بشكركم لحسن الاستماع بشكركم للتفاعل النهارده. نوريسا ثانك يو سو ماتش ات واز فيري فيري انفورماتيف اند وير اكسبكتنج ذا نيكست ايبيسود تو توك اباوت ذا ريست اوف ات اند اوتيزم از ويل. ثانك يو سو ماتش. يو ويلكم ثانك يو فور هافينج مي. الحقيقه هنشوف حضراتكم تاني هنتكلم على باقي مشاكل اللغه والتخاطب وهنتكلم كمان على الاوتيزم او مرض التوحد في الحلقه الجايه هتبقى حلقه مهمه هنكمل uh, زي ما انا قلت الكلام عن مشاكل اللغه والتخاطب ومرض التوحد. بشكركم لحسن التفاعل الرائع جدا اعتذار سريع واجب الاسبوع اللي فات كنا مقصرين في الرد على الاسئله الكتير اللي جات لنا على الفيسبوك انما هرجع للفيسبوك ونبتدي نجاوب كل الاسئله اللي فاتتنا بشكركم لحسن الاستماع والتفاعل ونشوفكم في حلقه جديده والاسبوع الجاي من وايت كود